I needed a telehandler in order to build the ultimate man cave, but said telehandler I can't afford unless I picked one up that had a blown engine. That's what I did. I did a three-part series on how to tear the engine down or what's involved, what was wrong with it. Be sure to check that out if you want to, and uh, we're putting it back together. So let's get started. Ryan's Mobile One. With the block and the head all stripped down and looking like a rusty mess, I hauled them to the machine shop. They gave them a bath, cleaned them up, decked them, put in new sleeves, and I got them back looking like this. It's supposed to be in there. Yeah. Oh. What nice do you think? New engine. That's a small opening for getting an engine in and out, isn't it? So we've got a block, a head, a bunch of loosely organized parts sitting on the floor, a gasket set, the rest of an engine rebuild kit, and an empty telehandler to put it in. You'll find it goes in easier. There we go. Harbor Freight one shining, saving the day. Bam, done. We were able to get these amazing readings by crushing the plastic in between the bearings and the crankshaft, for example. We're not quite as fat as the 0.038, and we're a little bit thicker than the 0.5, so nice and tight, we're perfect where we need to be. So I ran into some funny stuff on the main bearing caps. Specifically, this is the idler gear for the oil pump drive. I know this goes on this side, because otherwise it would hit the crankshaft. So that puts your numbers on your main caps. Here, 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 and all the way down. And the flats were to this side when I took it apart. So that's the right way to go. But the thing that's driving me a little bit crazy here, this is the main bearing. I bet we get even tighter, better clearance. Yeah, that's red. But anyway, the index goes to the index. They're just on the same side, but you switched. One's this side, one's this side. But it has to be that way because this cap is that way. You don't do them the same direction, at least on connecting rods. So like on this connecting rod, it should be this way. You look at this one, that's the way it is. But the numbers are, the serial numbers are different, you see what I mean? The numbers are on the right hand side, and the index is toward me when I put it on, okay? But then, and this is the way it was when I took it apart. When you look at this one, the numbers are facing the numbers here, but that index is still toward me. So you can't go by the numbers on these, which is weird. That makes me uncomfortable. So we should be on this between 0.05 and 0.11. That's how it would be if it were brand new. That's where we're at. Time to max this torque wrench back out. We'll go to 95 first. I don't, on these really high torque values, I don't like going straight to them. I like sneaking up on them, if you will. There's 95 and then I'll go back and do the 180 foot pounds. One is 150 and the other one's 180. Some high numbers. We're gonna put a cylinder head on this. Double check all of our arrows and all of our pistons are pointing forward before we put the head on or before we put the oil pan on. And they are, sweet. You'll notice that this puts the cavity here, the pot, further to this side toward away from the camshaft. Sorry, the camshaft's on this side. When you go to put the head gasket on, this thing is incredibly symmetrical with one exception, and that is these two holes here and these two holes there. So what you do is you identify where that oval is, whereas there's not one here. And you lay your gasket in place. I've already cleaned the surfaces. You see these two line up here, these two line up here and all of the rest of these for your rocker arms are all in place. But watch what happens if we flip it the other way. That's the only other way it could possibly go is this way. But if we do that, then it blocks off one of the holes. See how there's a hole here? And it gets blocked. So it definitely goes this way. Watch for that. Uh, I guess it's a pill shape, not an oval. Is that an oval? I don't know, you decide. But you line the gasket up just like that and we're ready to put the uh, cylinder head on. You'll notice that these are a narrow gap and they're connected. This is a disconnected wide gap. This is where that main bearing is that has the thrust washers on it. It's also got wider main bearings on it and wider caps. Let's put a head on. So after searching through all the bolts, sorting them out, getting them all divided up, I'm confident there are not any alignment dowels. Jeez, this thing's heavy. <clears throat> Something's wrong. 
All right, so there's two long bolts that are longer than all the rest. Those go at either end of the valve cover, outside the valve cover. That's about dead nuts on. The rest of these are all ones that I pulled from inside. They're all covered in oil. New valves, new springs, new keepers. All things just shining like a dime. Okay, the bolts on the right are longer. So the ones that are on the inside in this row are all the same, and then the short ones are here. Two longest ones on the outside. When I compare bolts to see which is longer, I just put them washer to washer like that, and it tells it real quick. So what I like to do with head bolts, especially if everything's like sterilized, clean, and really grabby, sticky, these bolts already have oil on them. Uh, but just put a little oil on the threads. That'll ensure that when you torque them down, you'll get a good proper torque and it won't click too early, leaving a loose head bolt. This engine block's been super cleaned, and these bolts are super dry. This way you lube them up a little bit to get a, a true good torque out of them. Now all I'm hitting with the oil is just the bottom four or five threads. That's all you need. This is just engine oil, 10W30 if you must know. It's the block that's dry, so I'm just going to hit all of them with a little oil. I had a couple of Subarus where they came out funny. You know, like I did everything machine shop, buy the book, stretch the bolts, do everything exactly right. And uh, the head gasket was funny. And I went back in and torqued the bolts down and then it was fine. And then I read somewhere shortly after that about oiling the bolts a little bit, how important that was to do. I'm like, alright, well I'm never going to forget to do that again. A lot of stress about that. But yeah, I should get a little oil on the washer too. Just take your pinky and just put a little oil. Just like a Pac-Man or a letter C or something. It's going to mess me up for when I paint it, having this oil on it. But it's better to do that and have a crappy paint job on your engine that nobody sees. Rather than to have a torque be too soft or light or leak. Leaky head gaskets aren't much fun. Kind of like dead puppies that way. Dead puppies aren't much fun. This is an efficient way to screw things up. It's not as bad as it looks. I'm using the same tightening pattern. I'm just going through with the impact to save a little bit of time. Not too tight. This is a diesel one. It's a lot of head bolts. Let's count them, shall we? 22. 22 head bolts. That's impact worthy. Let me get that close so you can see. I'll also leave a link in the description where I got this, but this is the tightening sequence. You can see number one's in the middle, and then it kind of works out as a circle. One, two, three, four, five, eight. But anyway, you work from the middle and go out. So you go for to 88 foot-pounds, and then you go 180 degrees. So when I was talking about alignment dowels and stuff, the way they do it is they actually go by this long bolt on the end and this uh, short one in the front. You put studs in and put it all over the top of it to line it up. So should you go by the torque specs that they show here? Should you go in order? I would say yes. And there's actually two here. So I would definitely go by these and mark them off as you go. And the reason being is you can keep track of it that way. That way you don't miss one and have a loose bolt in a leaky head gasket. That would suck. Alright, let's get to it. 88 foot-pounds. So the way this works is you do the 88 foot-pounds and then go back to those. But you also tighten them an extra 180 degrees or half turn when you're done. So you'll be doing everything twice. See how far I had to go even though I used an impact gun? There's one. Two is this one right here. Do you hear that? You hear the compression building? There's three. So you go through and tighten all the bolts and then you go through and do them all a half turn more. So there's three, and then four, and then five, and six, and seven. That's it, there's 22. So let me go back to your first 10. One, see how much more it goes. Two, three, four, five, six. Eight is about back on. Nine. Ten. Isn't that nuts? And now everything's on. And if I go back to 22, they're all on. For the first 10, you got to go back and hit those again. Dude, it's that way with a lot of things, it seems like. 
and you just go around and just hit all of them. It's supposed to be 88, so just get to it. Now we go 180 degrees. Now we're really crushing these suckers down. That's a pretty cool way to do it. It's just a heart. You just come around to these, back up to a point, come around to these, back up to a point, and then go out to the corners inside the valve cover, and then around the outside, across the front. All right, 180 degrees. What sucks is you're supposed to do this again after you run it, and then again after 25 to 50 hours. Let's just go across this way. I need to be going this way when I'm finished, almost to the tripod. It says if you use a certain tool and get it exactly on, that you don't have to go in and retorque it. Yeah, these aren't going to go 180 since I redid them. They'll go about 130, 140. More than that, you can get in trouble, I promise. first 90 degrees easy that last 90 it's tough it comes up just a little short just about we are there that felt good that's 22 bolts 88 foot pounds plus 180 degrees <laughs> I like it Bonus footage at the end. So we're rolling into town and you see that it's got EX plates, it's legit, light bar, lights in the back. And then you look at the guy here, and you see that he's got the police uniform and the glasses and the wig, everything. It's like a legit police car. But the officer inside's just always here. He's always on duty. He puts in more hours than anybody. He's got the little mustache and the sunglasses. It's awesome.